these are the things that were driven at OECD level, which came up with this framework. Now, even after having inclusive framework and getting everybody to agree to do some of the things, they still felt that they are running short and they are not still achieving the objective. So then they came up with a two pillar solution where pillar one is essentially, and we'll go into that detail. And more importantly was that they ask everybody who in signed up for inclusive framework, which is almost 135, 136, 140 countries by now, to also agree to the two pillar approach with their now pronouncing, right? So two pillar approach essentially deals with the shortcomings of the current tax system. So current tax system being the local domestic tax laws and international tax treaties put together. So what they are not able to address is what they want to address through the two pillar solution. Okay. So pillar one is talking about modification of the profit allocation through an excess route. In simple terms, it talks about and addresses all the companies which are in digital economy, which works through digital mode of their business whereby what they are trying to tell is that look you all operate everywhere in the world through your websites and others no problem we will come to the ultimate parent company we will collect the tax on a certain basis where they have defined that okay minimum profits are x whatever you earn over and above that x certain portion of that is what we will collect as an additional tax which the ultimate parent entity country will collect and then they will redistribute that tax which they have so collected to the markets from where you earn your revenue. Okay, so that's pillar one. Now that is a different approach whereby they are saying that it will be at the ultimate parent entity level only where that country or that tax authority of that country will collect that tax and redistribute. It only applies to digital economy at the moment. It doesn't apply to everybody when they started off with. Then when the two pillar solution was proposed, US was not party to it. Because US always thought that it is going to impact their corporates in an adverse manner. And therefore, we don't want to be party to this entire approach, right? So then the push and the pull, so the political uh, negotiations started, all of that went on. US, when they came on board to the two-pillar approach, they said, okay, we ratify the approach, we want to be party to it. But for that, they first thing that they did was they diluted the application of this pillar one in the sense that earlier, pillar one threshold was say 10 billion profit, uh, 750 million and above profit level, they took it up to 10 billion level. So only 10 billion and above turnover level. Then they say that, hang on, you cannot apply it to only one industry, you have to apply it generic. So everybody needs to be a party to the project and not just digital economy players. So not just Google, Amazon or alphabet, but also others. So it could be large pharma, it could be large bank, and everybody needs to be a party to that. So they wanted to dilute that entire concept, and they came up with newer threshold, which also OECD agreed in the interest of the overall thing. And very importantly, they get them to agree to the pillar two. So pillar two talks about slightly different thing. Pillar two says we will apply to all the MNCs, which has turnover of 750 million and above at a group level. And such MNCs are required to pay at least a global minimum tax. They came up with a tax rate of 15%, which that company needs to pay in every country that they operate and not just at the group level. Now, this was a huge demarcation from the way MNCs operated because MNCs presented a concerted balance sheet our tax cost at a global level XYZ so if I am 
an MNC headquartered out of US or say India or wherever, I'll still have a higher effective tax rate at an overall level. But in each country that I operate, do I pay 15%? I may not be paying that. So now they have came up with a mandate that each country that the MNC will operate in will pay 15% minimum tax. It will disregard all the tax in incentives given. It will not take into account the manufacturing benefit in some countries, the SEZ or free zone benefit in other countries, or some tax breaks for certain industry in few countries. All of that will be disregarded. Because what I'm going to look at is your financial statement. I'm going to see what is your tax expense in your book compared to your net profit in your book. Does it make effective tax rate of 15%? No, I'll collect the balance. That's the pillar two approach.